Hello, and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on scheduling tasks. So one of the very powerful features in Acumatica is the ability to schedule processes and to have them run at designated times. So through an Acumatica, when we look through the menu and we see all the different segments of the menus, you'll see these processes screens. So under finance, you could see release transactions, run allocations, generate recurring transactions, reclassify. These are all processes. If we go to banking, we can see the ability to release cash transactions. If we go to payables, you can also release your transactions here. You can release payments under sales orders. You can process orders and run different actions against these orders. So for example, create shipments, it's a very good example. Under inventory, you can prepare replenishment. This is into the process screens, but this is another example. And what we see throughout these screens is this icon right here, which allows us to schedule. So for example, if we go to our sales orders and we go back to process orders and we select an action such as create shipment, in distribution, it's beneficial to get all our shipments created and maybe print our pick lists in the morning. And even more specifically, many times companies do this where they get their overnight shipments created and print the pick tickets at about 10 o'clock in the morning, the overnight shipments, meaning delivery methods that require overnight. And then later in the day, maybe two o'clock in the afternoon, they'll create the remaining shipments. So let's get started by creating a schedule to create our shipments. So we'll click here, we'll add a schedule. We'll give it a description, create shipments. Create, let's call it create priority shipments. We'll put no execution limit on it. Execution limits allow you to run these schedules so many times. A good example of this is if we go into, let's say we have a recurring AP bill. So we have an AP bill that we know the vendor is going to charge us maybe five months in a row. So we would come in here and we'd put five here and then under our schedule associated to months. So in this case though, we're going to turn this off. This allows us to designate how much history we want to keep. If we have multiple companies or branches, we can run this schedule using a specific branch, but we'll leave it open. And then your action name is to process or process all. In this case, we're going to process all, but we'll get back to that in a second. We'll click schedule. And now we have the ability to select our schedule. So in this case, maybe my warehouse is open Monday through Friday. So in that case, I'll select weekly and I'll select my days of the week. And then I'll give it a time. So we'll say, as we talked about 10 AM. So the other thing we talked about is this process all. Well, even though we selected process all, we have the ability to define conditions for what records, what orders in this case, we want to create shipments for. So we talked about priority delivery methods. So we can come in here and select field name ship via is equal to FedEx overnight. And then under filter values, this allows us to define the action we're going to take which is already pre-filled in here because we had that on the screen when we hit add schedule. We can select by ship date and the shipment dates and end dates are all relative, relative to the date that it's running. So we'll save this and we'll close it. And now after creating our shipments, maybe we want to process our shipments and print the pick tickets. So we'll come in here 
will select print pick list. You can see the shipments that are ready to have their pick list printed. We'll add a schedule for that. So this will be print pick list. No execution limit. We'll set the schedule up for the same days. And in this case, we'll give the create shipments a couple of minutes. So we'll run this at 10.05. Our conditions will be the same for ship vias equal to FedEx overnight. And then under our filter, we're going to choose define printer manually. And we'll select our printer as being this one right here. So this requires the device hub. So the device hub is a service that runs on a computer that's local to a printer device. And when Acumatica sends information to this printer, it communicates with that device hub and automatically prints. So this really helps in the situation we're doing right here where the schedule is unattended, it's gonna run by itself, and our pick tickets will print out on a printer. So we'll save this. And now we have a schedule to print the pick list shortly after the shipments have been created. So lastly, if we go into automation schedules, there's a couple options here. This brings up your profile, so you can do a lookup. But this is really cool. This actually shows all your automation schedules. It shows which ones are active. It shows when they were originally started on when their last execution time and date was, and what the result is, and when the next time they're planning to run. Now lastly, you notice this initialize scheduler. So what this does is when we copy this company, maybe via a snapshot, or we replicate this and create another company, Acumatica automatically disables the schedule. This is because when you operate with sandboxes or you bring up a backup instance for testing, Acumatica's predefined logic prohibits the ability for these schedules to run again. And a good example of why you don't want that is the send receive emails, where emails may go out to customers even though it's a backup company. That would create duplicate emails going out to your customers, for example which would cause a world of confusion. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching Scheduling Tasks in Acumatica. If you have any questions, please see our contact slide at the end of the video.